Time now for to go live to the trading desk. We've got Victor Adair for me right now. Uh, Vic, interesting, listen to Don Velo because I know you've been following what's happened with the two-year Treasury uh, bonds and their yield there, also talking about uh, what's going on in the global stock markets. I mean, it seems like everybody's bullish right now. Uh, yeah, Mike, I think the, the what I'd call the key uh, market psychology that we've seen across asset classes so far this year is, a, is an aggressive willingness to take on risk. So that's driving the stock market higher. It's causing the bond market to go down. Like, who needs bonds when you can just make easy money in the stocks? And it's also making the U.S. dollar go down. And, and the, the way I see that is this. When, when the, there's a strong risk appetite in the market, capital goes away from what I'd call the center to the periphery. Okay, it goes away from safety to more risky stuff. And if you could picture that on a global view of the world, the capital goes away from New York and goes out to various countries around the world. We've seen the U.S. dollar weak across the board. You know, almost any and every currency you think of, the U.S. dollar has weakened from where it was uh, at 14-year highs January of last year. And my experience of trading currencies for more than 40 years in one sentence would be this that trends in the currency markets just go way further than you think makes any sense, and then they turn on a dime and go the other way. You know, it's interesting also, we had Brent Boyett on earlier from Canaccord, uh, talking about he likes the commodity sector as a move here. You heard Don Vialo talk about certain parts of the commodity sector, again, related to that weak U.S. dollar, because co- uh, commodities go up uh, sort of to uh, juxtapose that to make up for the difference because they're measured in U.S. dollars. What are you thinking when you see the commodity indexes? They look very strong right across the board. Sure. The, there, there's a number of commodity indices. Some of them are more heavily weighted to the energy markets and so on, but I follow, I don't know, maybe 10 different commodity indices. I'll tell you this. They, they almost all made their highs in 2011. Some of the really energy-centric ones made their highs back in 2008. But here's kind of the key thing that I'm interested in right now is that for the past seven years or so, since the commodity markets made their highs in 2011, commodity indices have gone down while the stock indices have gone up. So commodities relative to stocks are down about 70 to 75 percent in the last seven years to an 18-year low. Gold in particular, by the way, is down about 70 percent in that same period of time relative to the S&P 500 is what I'm using for a benchmark. What I think has happened in the commodity sector and commodity currencies over the past couple of years is that some big picture people, we would call them macro asset allocators, these might be pension funds and that sort of thing, have probably, probably taken some of their winnings off the table from the high flying stocks and started to position in the really cheap commodity sector. I think that has been going on and certainly if if we started to see a break in the commodity market and commo- pardon me in the stock market and commodities start to rise, that trade would probably accelerate. Uh, just a couple of quick things here, Vic. Uh, one of the things that we talked about also was, uh, you know, to come back to the Canadian dollar. I'm just specifically saying we got a ri- bank rise this week. We raised, rose, uh, we raised interest rates. Yeah. Easy for me to say, obviously. We raised the interest <laughs> rates this week. You know, it's against the backdrop also of the U.S. going to raise theirs. But I was interested that the Canadian dollar really didn't get excited about that in any way. I mean, there wasn't really any bump even. Yeah, I mean, to cut right to the chase, I I think the U.S. dollar is probably oversold here. And if the U.S. dollar was to rally, what would be the best way for me to play it when I look at the universe of currencies that I could get short and uh, against the U.S. dollar? And Canada is really right at the top of the list. Um, I, I think it's very possible as we go through this year that Canada really falls behind the United States in terms of raising interest rates. There's a, you know, I've got a laundry list of, of reasons why I think Canada could weaken against the, uh, the U.S. dollar. And, and it's even generic. I mean, I watch this very, very short-term time frames here, and I see that the Canadian dollar, the, the major thing that has caused it to go up or down lately is the relative strength or weakness of the U.S. dollar 
against what we call the pack. In other words, all the other currencies in the world. If the euro currency is kind of ticking higher, the Canadian is ticking higher. If the euro currency is going down, the Canadian's going down. So, yeah, I, I think the, and, and let me get this off my chest as well. <laughs> I mean, we had that unemployment report at the beginning of the month as to this super strong jobs growth in December. I'll tell you, I'm very much with David Rosenberg, the economist down in Toronto, who's basically saying, yeah, I can't really believe that number. Uh, <laughs> so I think we're going to see a, a revision in the Canadian employment report the next time uh, that comes out. Well, we'll get a chance to talk more about that. You can find, by the way, Victor's got much more extended what he thinks about the markets here at polarfuturesgroup.com. Polarfuturesgroup.com. You can click on there and uh, Vic has, excuse me, a chance to elaborate a little further. But in the meantime, Vic, we're only two weeks away from the World Outlook Conference. I look forward to uh, seeing you then at this time. Literally in two weeks, you'll be hosting because I'll be on the air. It'll be great stuff again with Victor Adair. Look forward to seeing you then, Vic. Okay, Mike, I look forward to seeing you then, too, of course.